previous video, we basically removed the front of the car so we could cut off the uh, crash box, which now is already cut off. But as you can see, there is still a piece left on it and that piece still has to go off. And I didn't bother too much about uh, explaining how to get it off because I thought it would be easy. And guess what? It is not easy at all. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, show you how I'm getting it off. Uh, because I think it's worthwhile uh, trying it this way. I've seen many examples on the internet of people trying it with steel wires and chisels and some people even knock it off. Um, I want to do, do it a bit more gentle and, um, and show you how uh, I am going to do it. Now, but before I'm going to take it off, I'm going to take a few shots uh, of where it actually fits. The first thing I will try to do now is to cut off this top lip uh, because that's kind of bent over the al aluminum part. So as you can see, um, the crash box, actually I kind of removed it already, and, but you can see how thick the, actually the seal is. So uh, this is what we call the beta seal. Uh, it's tough stuff to get it off. So uh, the way I'm going to do this is first of all get this lip off. Uh, see this whole thing here uh, needs to come off so I will cut it along this edge cut it off and then um, I will have easier access to the rest so to cut off the uh, front lip uh, you will need a few tools and the tools I'm going to use are a kind of a vibrating cutter uh, that's really great stuff to cut it off so we will cut along the top edge first and then um, I'm going to use a paint stripper, um, a 2000 watt uh, paint stripper basically uh, to heat up the front part and then uh, break it off uh, with another chisel or a big screwdriver or something like this. So now we'll uh, heat it up and see if we can get the top part off. So we got the top rim off. Uh, that was a bit of pushing, uh, but it works pretty well with a screwdriver and a, a heat gun. Uh, take your time, it will work. I mean, you've seen it, it didn't take that long. And then also use a vibrating uh, uh, saw uh, to cut it in pieces a bit in the beginning, so you have easy access. Uh, but be careful not to cut into the aluminum body, because that would really be a shame, wouldn't it? So now I'm going to get on and uh, now that I have this nice rim, uh, I will put something in between and then I will just heat it up. Hopefully I can then pull it off very easily while I heat it up with the heat gun. Uh, this is the rim I was talking about. Uh, we've cut it off before along this side. So now I have kind of a gap there. So I think it should not be that hard uh, to now force it off. I first tried uh, to cut it off with the heat gun and then and a chisel and as you noticed and that didn't work too well really. Uh, and then I tried uh, this uh, saw blade and that seemed to work a lot better. It looks like the other the blade gets, the better it works. So that's good. So now I'm going to continue. That seems to be working quite well. So let's continue. So 
as you could see, it didn't took that long, probably about 45 minutes to an hour to cut it all off. Um, we tried different things. I tried a heat gun, that didn't work too well, and a screwdriver. Uh, and at the end, uh, the vibrating saw was the perfect uh, tool to get it off. Uh, in fact, all what you see now uh, on it is the uh, beads that they have applied at the time. You can actually see it going like this. And those are quite easy to get off as well with this vibrating saw. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but if you use a, a vibrating saw, like the one I have here, then you should put a blade on which is no longer sharp. A pretty dull blade is the best so you don't damage too much the aluminum uh, of the body. So cutting off the remaining beads is, uh, is quite easy uh, with a vibrating saw, um, but the blade which is not too sharp. Depending on what kind of bonding uh, seal you're going to use to put the crash box back onto the structure, um, you'll either have to remove all the old beads or uh, basically you can ha leave residues. If you're going for the beta seal, which was the original uh, bonding seal that was used to put the crash box on by Lotus, then it doesn't really matter if you leave some uh, residue as long as it's no more than one millimeter um, because the bead itself when you put it on is quite thick so the, that is what it is uh, but the bonding seal from uh, beta seal is hard to get and uh, I'm going to use something else a replacement product and for that one I need to clean it up so I'm actually sanding it down uh, with a non-rotating uh, disc it's just vibrating and then um, I'll, I'll get it almost down to the aluminum so it's nice and smooth so I can put the, the seal on. I've done already a part in the front so now I'm going to do the second part. It takes a bit of time to do it but that's okay. It's all cleaned up and ready to receive the new crash structure. Uh, it's on order and as soon as I have it, uh, I will make my next video to show you how we are putting it on to the chassis. Keep watching and thank you for viewing. And if you have any tips or comments, feel free to write your comment or send me an email because I'm always willing to learn. Thank you.